Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna go through why having a shoe rotation is a good idea and how to start one. I'm making this video because a friend asked me to recommend a running shoe. And I have 50 pairs or more of running shoes, 30 of which I still run in. And uh, in this video, I'm not going to go through individual shoe reviews. I'm gonna go through why it's a good idea to have and to rotate shoes, and then how to build up from one shoe to two shoes to well, till you lose a run of yourself. This video might be long, so as always, there'll be chapter markers down below so you can skip on through to the bits you might be interested in. Let's get going. Reason one is to rest the foam. As you run, the foam in the shoe compresses and it needs time to decompress. And if you run on consecutive days, the shoe might not have had enough time to sort of decompress and won't be in peak condition for when you next go running in it. Number two is to extend the life of the shoe. Again, if you're not running in the shoe when it has, it has had time to rest, then you run the risk of wearing it out a little bit quicker than you otherwise would. The third reason is it can be cheaper. Rather than spending all your time running in an expensive carbon fiber shoe, you can keep that for race days or specified training days and spend a lot of the time running in a cheaper, easy day shoe that when you put the two together will overall give you more mileage at lower cost. Number four is performance. You might be trying to set a personal best in a flat marathon, in which case a Nike Vaporfly 3 might be ideal. But alternatively, you might be running on a gnarly trail where you need a lot of traction and something like an Innovate G300 might be more suitable. Numbers five and six are the most important reasons for me. Different use of muscles. I run in shoes with varied heel drops from zero to 12 millimeters. I like different cushioning and different types of foams and I like to go on different stack heights and I like to do all that so different muscles get different workouts and then again if you vary the terrain with that and you vary the speeds different muscles around your body get different workouts which for me is beneficial. Number six is the most important. It's a direct result of number four and number five choosing the right shoe for the right course and tempo you're trying to run at and number five, getting different use of muscles, and that is less injury. The more variety in the shoes and the running you have, the less likely you are to injure. Like many videos I've made recently, I've delved a little bit into the science, particularly in relation to five and six. And I read an academic paper, Can Parallel Use of Different Shoes Decrease Running Related Injury Risk? by L. Malasu, J. Ramesh, Orman, Orseal, A. Urhausen, and D. Tyson from the Scandinavian Journal of Medicine and Science in Sport. And I put a link in the description below. So let's have a look at some of the things they had to say. So, running is characterized by the repetition of a large number of almost identical movements with very few variations. Consequently, most of the running related injuries, RRIs, are cumulative micro trauma injuries, progressive in nature, and thus could be classified as overuse injuries. As hypothesized, runners reporting the use of different pairs of running shoes during the observation period had a 39% lower risk of RRI compared with runners using only one pair of shoes. Because multiple shoe users wore their predominant pair of shoes for no more than 58% of their running sessions on average, it could be argued that the relationship between a multiple shoe use strategy and the lower injury risk arises from the alternation in the forces applied to the body. And I think that's the one that intuitively I find is, is the different muscles, different forces, less injury, more strength in the uh, body. I'm rotating shoes every week, all the time. I just constantly rotate them for a whole load of different reasons. However, as I come close to a race, about three weeks out or so, I really trim down on the rotation, only going with a couple of different shoes so that my muscles aren't getting any surprises. Ordinarily, I like the surprises, I like the different, uh, workout my body gets but closer to a marathon or an important race trim it right back down i track the mileage of all my shoes in a spreadsheet well i say mileage i mean kilometerage and i typically want to test the shoes in their prime and so because i'm trying to report back accurate results and accurate data on pretty fresh but slightly worn in shoes i typically stop running in a shoe if it's a carbon plate racing shoe at about 200k and I'll typically stop running in a regular shoe at about 300 kilometers. And I mean, you'll get much more life out of a shoe. 
but just because I'm trying to report back in their prime condition, I'd expect all of those shoes you'll get, you should get easy, I'm hard on shoes, but you should easily get double out of the lifespan. But I do want to report back that the shoes are in, when report back when they are in good condition. And the other thing I don't do is, I don't do a lot of walking in my running shoes. Rarely on occasions I do, but I typically want to keep the mileage just for running. To look at some typical rotations, we'll start with flat, dry road running, which is typically what I do most of. Let's start with a run shoe rotation. I used to run in shoes to such a point that my toenails would come out the front or they'd release a new version. That was kind of how I changed my shoes. Really wasn't very sensible. But if you're going for a one shoe rotation, you run a couple of times a week, not on consecutive days, then I would suggest that if there's a differentiation between whether you also do some racing or you don't do any racing. If you don't do any racing, then in one shoe rotation, I'd look at this, the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. Great, comfortable shoe. Not that lightweight, but it does. Um, it's a really good one shoe if you don't do any racing. Now, in this particular video, I'm not gonna give advice on all the different shoes. I'll, I might do a run through the shoes a different day. But if you do have some racing, then I would get this, the Brooks Hyperion Max. It's a bit lighter. It's a great shoe, really comfortable, uh, hard wearing, and with a bit of racing, yeah, I'd go for one shoe rotation, the Brooks Hyperion Max. Building up to a two shoe rotation, you might have a general shoe and a race shoe and a general trainer. You might use this, something like an on cloud monster, on running cloud monster, and then save the race day. You'd go out in your Vaporfly 3s and also in longer runs, towards race day just to get ready in them, but pretty much keep it exclusively for racing. So a three shoe rotation, which I think is pretty much the sweet spot for most people. You might have an easy day shoe, a day for strides, tempo, and fast running time trials, and then you might have a race shoe. And so again, you might have an easy day shoe, you might have the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 for your long, easy runs where you don't wanna get beat up. You might have a strides, tempo, time trial, shoe, the Brooks Hyperion Tempo, an excellent shoe for that kind of thing. And then for the race, again, you might be out in your Vaporfly 3s. But a three shoe rotation is pretty much the sweet spot before it starts to get a little crazy. As you go up in the shoe madness, the four shoe rotation, let's consider sustainability. This is a great shoe to run in, the On Running Cloud Neo. It's uh, one I run in regularly, but you could actually use this for any, like all shoes, you could pretty much use them for anything. And this particular shoe is well worth having in anyone's rotation. Number five in the rotation would be a shoe to use when you're injured. For me, that's the Invincible Run Flyknit 2 or the one, if you can get the one, not the Invincible Run Flyknit 3. I use either of those shoes when I'm feeling really injured, my knees are hurting. It, essentially in that shoe, I have less, it's so spongy, I have less pressure on my joints. So when I'm injured, I run in those, which uh, I'll be running this week because I've hurt my back. I also rotate the shoes if there's wet weather and I'm concerned about grip. If it was a race, I'd be out in my New Balance Fuel Cell Elites, which have great grip at the bottom. And also if it was on trails, I might be in my North Face vectives so yeah if it's wet which it often is here in ireland i might be running in either of those number seven a waterproof shoe so sometimes when it's just raining a lot but i'm not worried about the grip i might go out in a waterproof shoe depending on the conditions and i might be out in this the on running cloud flyer or also the on running cloud venture waterproof more reasons to buy shoes a road to trail shoe or a trail to road shoe something that you can run on the road and run on trails and that i would use the a trail base trail a shoe i really enjoy running in good bit of grip i use this actually a lot on on wet days a shoe that i've really enjoyed running in but yeah for light trails bit of road running number nine is technical terrain so again if it's technical i'll be in the innovate trailfly ultra g300s so yeah much more grip much more durability when the trail gets tricky Number 10, you might want a lightweight racing shoe like the Nike Streak Fly. You might find that the uh, Alpha Fly and the Vapor Fly are well suited to marathon distances, but are, are a bit heavier for shorter distances. And so, yeah, something like the Nike Streak Fly might work for you. Another of my use cases is where I have to travel to a sort of conference and I want to do some running but not have to pack too many shoes. And to do that, I often take the On Cloud Stratus. It looks 
I mean, I'm at design conferences. You could go and, well, I could go in this. But effectively, if I turn up in this, it kind of goes well, easy to travel in. It's comfortable on all sorts of distances, ran all over Zurich in it. It's, uh, yeah, that is one that if I wanted to go to a conference, I would uh, bring this and adaptable. And I've done that several times recently. Use case 12 is my travel injury slip on shoe combo. I travel a lot in this shoe. It's very easy to get on and off. It's the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent Flyease. You can step in and out of it really easily, really handy for airport security. And this week when I have a, a, a pretty serious back pain, uh, it's very hard to put on socks, never mind shoes. That's a great shoe to pop in and out of. Um, I'm afraid of, of ruining it. I really do like the shoe. It'd be really handy. I might get another one in it, just a different color that I'll beat up, but yeah, it's a great shoe for travel or injury. And when you're done running all those shoes, you need this, the Hoka Aura Recovery Flip. Really good for just walking around a hotel room after a marathon or something like that, or just generally walking around. Yeah, the recovery sandal is really handy to have. To go back to the question I was originally asked, one shoe, I picked this, the Brooks Hyperion Max. It'll do everything really well. It's not too expensive. It's pretty fast. It's pretty comfortable. It's a great all round shoe. Brilliant as the Brooks Hyperion Max is, there's only so much that one shoe can do. If you're running more than a couple of times a week, and certainly if you're running on consecutive days, I think you should look at investing in more than one shoe. To return to the signs, to see what they say, Multiple shoe use and participation in other sports are strategies potentially leading to a variation of the load applied to the musculoskeletal system. They could be advised to recreational runners to prevent RRI running related injury. And I think we all want to prevent running related injury. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some more videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.